self-control. They just have no self-control. I think that's the only place this word is used in the New Testament. Furious. Despisers of those that do good. So if you do good, you're not going to be one of the most popular people on the block, but they will respect you. And you have that coming. So don't ever forget that. In other words, what he's laying forward for you here is that in the end generation, those that do what is right are going to have a lot to stand up against, but they're on the winning side. So what do we worry about? Nothing. We don't have to worry about any control. They just have no self-control. I think that's the only place this word is used in the New Testament. Furious. Despisers of those that do good. So if you do good, you're not going to be one of the most popular people on the block, but they will respect you and you have that coming. So don't ever forget that. In other words, what he's laying forward for you here is that in the end generation, those that do what is right are going to have a lot to stand up against, but they're on the winning side. So what do we worry about? Nothing. We don't have to worry about anything. It doesn't matter how hard Satan tries. We're going to boot him. We're going to take names. We're going to kick dragon every time. We're taking ground. We're not giving it up. And I, I'm happy to say that probably the revival of wanting to hear the truth has, is well underway or all the way around the world. Uh, instead of playing church, get down to business. And that is to say, making a stand for Christ and not being afraid to put your name on it, not being afraid to put the full gospel on, a gospel on, not being afraid because we know, hey, they're afraid of us. Verse four, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Well, if they anything but to study God's word, anything but to please God, you know, they'll find a way out. That's just kind of a natural to some people. I suppose you've met some of them. Be careful, friend. Verse 5, having a form of godliness, but, I mean, I mean, they look like good Christians, and you know what? They even claim to be Christians, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Christianity is a reality. It's in your life daily. See that you hold to it. And you're going to find those that like to play church and they will teach anything but the word of God. Now, that's where danger slips in. That is where you turn away. Don't have anything to do with it. Verse 6, for of this sort are they which creep, uh, which creep into houses and lead captivity, silly women. This is a figure of speech that's more silly men than it is women. Laden with sins, led away with divers lust. In other words, you want to come over? Boy, we really have a kick. You know what we do in our church? We laugh. That's all we do is laugh and roll and have a good time. Whoa, doesn't that sound exciting? What about God's word? Yeah. So um, be careful of those that like to tell you great things that bend your ear, sensationalism. That's all some people want to talk about or search for is sensationalism when the very fact that God wrote a word that is common sense and in the simplicity that Christ taught it and only a fool will allow someone to drag him away into something else. His word is sufficient because his children are destroyed because of what? Lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge from who? From God, your father, your very own father. He tells you how to get it done. Listen. Verse 7. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Just study, study, study. But you, they go over the garden 20 times 
start their little Sunday school children out in the garden and have a, a, a basket of apples to prove it. Okay. But never, never getting to the truth. Many of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Many of us attended church many years knowing all the time there was more to God's word than what we were being taught. So learn, 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 and never learn anything. That's what happens when you don't stay in God's word chapter by chapter and verse by verse. Eight. Now, as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Do you know where these characters came into play? Well, back in Moses' time, of course, Exodus, hold your place there. Let's, I'm, and you don't have to turn with me if you don't want to. I'm going to zip over here to Exodus chapter 7, and we're going to see what these two characters were up to. Okay, chapter 7, I'm going to begin with verse 11. You're all familiar with it. Uh, it's where Aaron cast his rod down and it turns into a serpent, all right? And Janus and Jabez put their uh, staffs down and they did the same thing. Those are seducing spirits, okay? Verse 11 of chapter 7, Exodus. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers. Now the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. You notice their enchantments? Verse 12, for they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. Do you think Satan doesn't have certain powers? Do you understand God is talking to you here? In the end generation, you'd better go grow accustomed to seeing certain things that makes something look so religious and so mystical. Said this is going to be kind of like this. Aaron throws his rod down, turns into a serpent, and here come the wise men and the magicians, the sorcerers. They cast theirs down. They turn into sorcerers, serpents also. But look what happened. For they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents, but Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. Why? We've got the victory. Now, why, oh why, let's, let's look at that without just passing on by. Why would our attention be called to it? Because it has to do with the serpent. It has to do with that old serpent, the dragon, which is to say the false messiah, and his protégés and his influence on pulpits, his influence on the minds of people, performing mystics, making, you know, playing religion, you know, to wail and to cry and um, to uh, mislead people under the name of Christianity. And some people are so biblically illiterate, they don't know the difference. They'll just follow along. Let's chase the stars tonight. Let's fix a new church and worship astrology. Well, now the Bible's in the stars, but you don't need to make a religion out of it. There's only one religion. That's Christianity, and it's a reality. So you don't get all carried away with something. You don't let them see you sweat on your first cruise. Now, don't take from that. I did not, I did not indicate you shouldn't learn everything you have the possibility of learning. But the first time it differs with God's word, it's heresy. It's fake. It's, and if it isn't true, if God's word will not give it a second witness, you're puffing smoke, friend, and you're headed for trouble. So stay educated. Stay up in Father's word. Okay, let's return to um, the book of uh, 2 Timothy. The serpent was utilized because it is the serpent, the devil, that tries to take your mind. And he's got a lot of tricks up his sleeve for this generation. Verse 9, but they shall proceed no further. That's it. 
For their folly shall be manifest unto all men as theirs also was. Whoa, did you understand what that says? Do you know what the word manifest means? It's going to be made visible, a fact, that miracles will be performed by the same serpentine efforts that were performed at this time. And, well, where does it say that? Well, have, you're not familiar with Revelation chapter 13, verses 11, those that follow, that Satan, when he comes as the spurious Messiah, will perform miracles in the sight of manifested, in the sight of men to deceive the world. Make sure it doesn't deceive you. There are seducing spirits and you will find many of them right in the pulpits of the nation. That has nothing against good Christian people. But a fake is a fake, and that's it. Never stand up for a fake. Or what does that make you? Do you understand what I'm saying? Separate the sheep from the goats and never apologize for it. How do I know? God's word. Verse 10. But thou hast fully known my doctrine. I hope you have, beloved. I hope we've done the best we can. You, Paul was a great teacher because God placed the words in his mouth. Manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, and patience. Paul had a bunch of it. 11. Uh, persecutions, afflictions, which, come, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Don't ever forget that. You know, I, some, some people talk a real mean Christian battle, you know. Good Lord, I've got a flat on my car. That flat's ruining my life. I don't know how to overcome this. My fuel pump went out. Well, poor baby, walk. Don't let a fuel pump stop you, okay? You know, I, I mean, really. You, know, you, you get people that talk, they, they're ready to take on the devil and a fuel pump eats them alive. Now, what's going wrong here, okay? I mean, don't be a poor me baby, ever. Okay. And try to join God's army. It won't fly. Okay, God's going to show you the way. He'll always show you a way out of it if you won't let Him see Him. If they, if you will not let them see you sweat on your first cruise, I use that a lot. That's an old military term. Is when it gets real hot. That's no time to sweat. Sweat after it's all over. Do your business, all right, and be scared later. Scared is for while you're waiting for the enemy. And after it's over, not while it's going on, or you will be one dead rascal, all right? You got to know how to think in action, whereby you can be used by God. Okay, the Lord delivered me, Paul said, every time. And you know something? He will you also, 12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Jesus, in Christ Jesus, shall suffer persecution. You want me to read that again? Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall, not maybe, shall suffer persecution. I mean, that's just the way it is. Do you know why? Haven't you heard the prince of the air rules the times now? What do you expect him to do? Give you an ice cream cone? Maybe a chocolate sundae or something like that and say, you're my good buddy? I don't think so. Not when you're godly. You're his enemy, and he's going to give it to you every time you let your guard down. What's the answer then? Don't let your guard down. Take names, kick dragon, okay, in the name of Jesus, and you'll do just fine. No problem. Just average day's work. I mean, hey, be the type that likes to go out before you have your Wheaties and take on three or four of them, thump them good, and then come back and have breakfast. That's what you do to evil spirits, all right? Get them off your property. There's not room for you and them both on, in your house or on your property. Clean house with something besides a broom. 
I hope somebody needed that. That's not part of this. Just throw it in here. I hope, I hope me and mama treat y'all good when you get home. <laughs> oh, well, different subject for a different time. 13, on we go. But evil men and seducers, I want you to underline that word, and seducers shall wax worse and worse, not better and better, worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Now, do you, do you know what this word seducers is in the Greek? It is goes, G-O-E-S. Do you know what it means? It means to whale. It means to be magician-like, you know, sorcerer-like, all in the name of some kind of spirit. It's not God's. Playing church, seducing people, that will listen to nonsense. The, the actual word means the whale. It means a wizard or it means an imposter. If you turn to in your Strong's Concordance, that's what you'll find. It's an imposter. And a lot of people like the whale and put on a lot of emotionalism. You know, people that know enough about psychology to play with your emotions can really do strange things to you if you let your guard down. They can, they'll talk so sweet to you, you'll think, whoa, that, that person is the best judge of character I've ever run across in my life. They know my potential. Okay. Be careful. That's not, they're not after anything but your soul, friend. Be very careful. Okay. There are seducers in the world, and unfortunately, they are seducing spirits that like to play church. Oh, it looks so religious. Oh, it even sounds religious. Question, is God's word taught there? Or are we just playing? Are we just doing a lot of wailing and imposturing? Okay. And if you think I'm knocking good churches, you're wrong. I love them. Love every one of them. You know I will never say a word against a good church. I don't care what denomination it is. It usually depends on the pastor of that church, whether it's good, bad, or ugly. But that's what you go by. Don't call names and don't make judgments. Leave that up to God. But I cut no slack for imposters. Those that will rip off the sheep, God's children, and never quite get around to doing their work of teaching his word, regardless of whether it takes hide, hair, and all. It won't make you popular, I guarantee you. You will win no popularity contest in the overall world, but it will with your father. And if you love him, that's what's the most important thing in your life. Okay, beware of Goessa, verse 14, seducers, in other words. But continue, verse 14, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. Did you get that? This is what you do instead. You continue in the things which you have learned, learned from what? And has been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them. The Holy Spirit giving unction to God's word that it clicks in your mind and using common sense, you know that is correct. Verse 15, listen carefully. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Some of you, when you were even a little child, you knew deep down within your heart and mind, there was more to God's word than you were being taught. That's a prime sign of one of God's election. Doesn't make you better than anyone else. It makes you a little sharper. And it means you need to grow but what he's insisting here is that you stick with God's word, not some whaler. Well, that, for, that means someone that uh, cries nonsense, all right, in the name of God, okay? And um, how fantastic it is to let God's word be the counselor of your life. You know what? It'll change your life to the better, your whole family. 
It will. Verse 16, all scripture, how, how, how much of the scripture? All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. There's no other. This is it. You've reached the pinnacle when you're in God's word as far as counsel is concerned. It will, it will let you reprove your life. Am I doing it right? Well, let's see what God has to say and make sure you rightly divide the word when you do that. Okay, do you know what rightly divide means? Who's it written to? Who's it talking to? What's the time period? And what, what is the essence of the uh, subject article and so forth? And then stick with it, go with it. Verse 17, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished into all good works. Now, I, I want to tell you something. That word perfect won't quite fly because you're never, never, never going to find a man or woman that's perfect that teaches God's word. There just are no perfect people left. Christ was the only one. We all make error. The word means maturity. It means you need to mature where you at least judge your life and run it by God's word so that you're not misled, so that you know falseness when you come abreast of it. And you know when you're being had. Because why? God's word guides you. He will never, never, never let you down. He will never, never, never forsake you. He will always be with you. Now, you can leave him. He'll let you do that. I said, you can leave him, but he will never leave you. So just hang tough and know he cares. Why? You're his child. You know something? You're the only one like you he's got. Thank God. But <laughs> I just wanted to see if y'all were awake. <laughs> okay. And he loves you because no one else's fingerprints are like yours. No one else has a smile like yours. No one else has a personality exactly like yours. That's why God created you the way you are, his child. And he loves you. So uh, let him be your counselor because he does love you. Okay. And uh, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. This word will show you how to do it right. While, while we're here in Timothy, turn back to 1 Timothy Chapter 4. We're going to just take a couple of verses and then I want to go somewhere else. First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1 reads, Now the Spirit speaketh expressively that in the latter times, that means the latter times of this age, that means right now, some shall depart, I'll repeat, depart, from the faith, giving, why do they depart from the faith? Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Do you know the difference? It's real simple. Do you want to go with jamborees? Oh, they can produce little serpents. They can play tricks for you. It looks more impressive. Be geared for it mentally and spiritually, beloved. Satan is supernatural also. Don't let him deceive you, nor especially, hey, the battle hadn't really got underway yet. It's raging all right. But when he gets here de facto, that's when the battle really picks up tempo. And these so-called miracles begin to happen in the sight of people. They're going to go nuts. In our eyes, they will. They'll think they're doing just right, wailing and carrying on. But you be prepared for it. Seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. What does God say doctrines of devils are? Well, I don't know. We'll go back to the old and kind of search it a little bit here in a minute. See if we can anchor in our minds that 
thoughts too, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Do you know how you cauterize a wound? You know, you take a branded iron and, you know, or a knife and you sear it over a bullet hole and close it up. I mean, it cauterizes it. Do you know what happens though? You can punch that place and guess what? There's no feeling there. Do you understand what I'm saying? The nerve system is dead. There's no feeling there. Oh, it's healed, but there just is no feeling there. Now let's go back and read that again. The speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared or cauterized. Hope I'm saying that right. I think I am. Cauterized with a hot iron. There's no feeling there. So don't let that surprise you either. Verse 3, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received. Now, you're going to have some false teachers that are going to come along and say, that proves God made all meats fit to eat. Is that what you get from that? I hope not. That isn't what it says. If, if you believe that, you're listening to man instead of God, and you must train yourself to observe the subject of the word from your father. It says very clearly, do not let a man forbid you from meats or to marry, which God hath created to be received. He didn't create some meats to be received. Why? They'll make you sick. Okay, God is the same always, so you've got to stick with the subject and read like you were taught in the fourth and fifth grade and even before. Don't let some man jinx you by, and never let a, a doctorate or something of that nature, but I, with my credentials, declare. Well, no one has credentials like our Father. And that's what he said, and you know something? That's the way it is, all right, period. Okay. And with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth, all right? And that's the way it is. God is the same. Yesterday he is today, and he will be forever. His word was the same yesterday it is today, and it will be forever. Do you know where that's documented? Mark chapter 13 stipulates that this world age will end. Many other things will, but God's word will never change. So you never waste time studying his word. I want to go to another place where he told of seducers. And I'm going to tell you something. They're out there, friend. You can turn your TV on and you're going to have seducers. Do they mean to be? Probably not. But, hey, it's the norm. It's the norm to rip people off in the name of God. I hope you're wise enough to recognize that by turning your tube on. You know, they're trying to rip you off in the name of God. They'll say a few fuzzy sentences about Jesus loves you, which he does. And then they'll say, now we're going to have a telethon for two weeks. And they're going to have you mortgaging your home, giving blood and everything else to raise money to send to them. Empty out your bank account. So what do they really have on their mind money. Okay, that's no big deal, is it? I mean, it's a smart person, an intelligent person gets on to that quickly. So you can tell by thinking, don't, and always think, stop, and think, and analyze. No one, if you've studied God's word, is wiser than God. You may think there are some people wiser than you, who knows, maybe there could be, but there's nobody wiser than your father. And don't you ever, ever let someone try to tell you any different. Ezekiel chapter 13. Old Testament. If you're all familiar with this chapter, we're doing the book of Ezekiel now. And you bet you this is where the rapture theory was warned of. But that wasn't the main thing he warned you of. The rapture theory was only an example of how they would deceive you. Let 
This is against seducers. Seducing spirits and how they operate. Chapter 13, verse 1, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against, not for against, the prophets of Israel that prophesy and say thou unto them, that prophesy out of their own hearts, not God's word, their own little old decrepit minds. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Three, thus saith the Lord God, Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. Not a Zippo. <laughs> Haven't got it. Probably never had it. And are not looking for it. God will not deal with anyone that is a fake. God will not deal with a beggar. God doesn't send out beggars. And uh, maybe I repeat that quite a bit. Maybe that's why I'm so popular on certain networks, okay? Because uh, I don't know why if we happen to have a station with them, bam, we're gone. <laughs> they don't like that. But it's true. So I will teach it and teach it and teach it. All you have to do is get two stations in the same town on secular television. All they want is money and truth. Okay, all they want is money, but that gives you an opportunity to teach truth, okay? Word to the wise is sufficient. Okay, verse 9, let's skip on. And mine hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and that divine lies. They shall not be in the assembly of my people. No way. There isn't room Neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel, neither shall they enter into the land of Israel, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. God will put up with it. And that time's coming when out there going. They better enjoy it. Judgment begins at the pulpit. All right, that's scriptural. So if you're going to set yourself up as a teacher of God's word, I hope and pray that's what you teach instead of your own malarkey. Uh, saying God said this. God told me today, I, oh, wait, wait, wait. No, I've seen this. God told me today that I should have a word of wisdom for you. It is the dumbest thing that comes out of their mouth in the world. You think that came from God? I don't believe it. Okay? I just can't quite believe it. And yet I'm not going to judge. It's just that I think they serve a different God than I do. I, I don't know. God, has God spoken to me? Yes, he has. But you're not going to hear me talk about it. Especially, he's not going to talk to me while I'm up here. Do you know why? Because he says, if you haven't done your homework before you get up there, it's too late, Charlie. I can't use you. That's just the way it goes. You either do your homework or get out. That's what he says. All right. Now, uh, verse 10, because even because they have seduced my people, saying peace, and there was no peace, and one built up a wall, and lo, others daubed it with untempered mortar. This word in the Hebrew is ta, and it means the same thing, to mislead, to be a wizard, a magician with playing religion to mislead you, even playing politics to mislead you. Don't listen to it. They whitewash it over. What does that mean? Well, they talk to you. Got the latest news this evening. There's peace to the world. We're just almost at the point. Do you know what's going on behind the scenes? They just killed five on the wall, you know, and somebody broke their word here and somebody there. And there was 15 killed here and 24 there and several civilians. Peace? There's only one prince of peace, and that's Jesus Christ. He has not returned yet. So be careful. Okay, uh, say unto them which daub it with untempered water that it shall fall. I mean, you can say that with a surety, dear one. You know, untempered truth. That means, well, you don't have to study God's word. You're going to fly away. You can, without a, a doubt, say that's a lie. It's not going to happen. That whitewash will not wash 
It will wash. That's how it washes down the drain. Okay. Okay. Let's skip on to the 16th verse where he, he continues on and tells you about these seducers, these whalers, ones that like to play preacher. Tells you all about it. And then finally, he gets down to the nitty gritty and gives you an example. And you can see it in your life today. I know you've all been over this, but we got a lot of people through those cameras that have never heard it before. So you're going to, and you are a seed planter. We're going to plant some seed. We're going to make a little hay while the sun's shining right here, okay? Verse uh, 16, and then we'll go from there. To wit. The prophets of Israel, which prophesy concerning Jerusalem, and which see visions of peace for her, and there is no peace, saith the Lord God. 17, likewise thou son of men. In other words, this is an example. Set thy face against the daughters of thy people, which prophesy out of their own heart. That means their own little mind. And prophesy thou against them. What is it those, remember, we're all the bride of Christ, so this doesn't single out women, all right? It singles out all of us, the bride of Christ. What are they teaching? 18, and say, thus saith the Lord God, woe to the women that sew pillars to all armholes and make kerchiefs upon the head of every stature to hunt souls, that means to teach salvation. Will you hunt the souls of my people and will you save the souls alive that come into you? Now, I want to tell you what is said here in the Hebrew. God says to those people that sow other things that fits any harm hole. It's a religion for all that fits all sizes. Okay? You, you, are you with me here now? Okay. And they've used that same thing that fits all, a religion that fits all sizes and throw it over my outreach to arms of salvation. You cover over the truth with your self-made religious sal of salvation that's one size fits all. Now, I don't know about the rest of you, but I've never found anything advertised where they say one size fits all that's comfortable. You know, it just doesn't work that way, all right? You know, it's just things can get binding. But they make up religion saying, listen, I've got some good news for you. You don't have to understand God's word. That's a lot of work. Just believe and fly with me, all right? And away they go, you know. They cover over the whole truth. And that's why God would say, it isn't enough to hear my word. I want you to do it. And God does love doers. But he said, this one religion is so ridiculous that they go around and sew this religion together that fits all. Just believe and you're saved. Do you love Jesus? Which one? You know, sometimes when someone says that to you, ask them, say, which one? If you want to see them, uh, uh, what? <laughs> I, I, hey, I'm not, I'm not really knocking people that like to go out and try to plant their seeds and so forth. But uh, you know what I mean? It takes intelligence. And that one religion won't fit all sizes. It only fits those that are concerned with God's word enough to know the false Christ comes first. And this religion they whipped up is going to make all peoples that haven't studied the word for themselves jump in bed with Satan. They're not going to be virgins when the true Christ returns. That's why Jesus would say in the 13th chapter of Mark, and I think we'll go there in a minute to close this out. Woe to those that are with child when I return and they give suck. He wasn't talking about a mother carrying a child in her womb. There's no sin in that. He was talking about those that are supposed to be virgin brides of him. He being the groom spiritually that's been away for 2,000 years and he comes home and finds you with a nursing baby. What happened? Well, something sure did. You're even nursing. You not only slept with Satan, so to speak, 
but you're nursing along his work. You're helping him, not the Lord God Almighty. What do you expect from God then? That's what this sowing your little religions of salvation will do to you if you're not careful. If you pull away from the word of God and go into nonsense, well, 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 prove that just a little further for me, okay? I will. Verse 19. And when you pollute me among my people for handfuls of barley, you're going to turn yourself into a bunch of beggars, spend all your time raising money and not teaching my word. That's what it means. And for pieces of bread to slay the souls that should not die, to save the souls alive that should not live, by your lying to my people that hear your lies. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I am against. Now, I want you to verify for me. Does that say I am for? No, it says I am against your pillows, that one that fits all sizes, wherewith ye there hunt the souls to make them fly. You don't have to understand God's word. You're going to fly away. And I will tear them from your arms and will let the souls go, even the souls that you hunt to make them fly. It will Cut it, friend. Seducing spirits are rampant in this generation. And I know that offends some, but, I, you know, if you love people, you teach the truth whereby they can at least grab on to his word and educate themselves whereby they are not destroyed because of lack of knowledge from God's word. That's hard, tough love, kind of. But I love teaching God's word, and I will make no apology for the written word of God because God loves all of his children, and he's not going to allow them to be deceived. So if somebody comes around to you, nowhere is it written that you're going to fly. Second Thessalonians, First Thessalonians chapter 4 simply says that at the seventh trump, we will meet him in the air. That word air out in the Greek does not have atmosphere. It doesn't mean sky. It means breath of life. It means spiritual body. We will meet him in. The same thing that Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52, when he stipulated that the last trump, that's the furthest one out in the Greek. There's only seven. We can count, can't we? Of course, that we're all changed instantly into the breath of life body, the arrow, arrow, 109 in your Greek dictionary. And that's what we meet him in. And they take that and turn it into a religion all of its own. And I heard one dude just yesterday, and the rapture is secured as long as we have Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. This was just yesterday, okay? Do you know what Revelation chapter 4, verse 1 says? God says, John, get yourself up here, boy. And they think that's talking to them. I don't know if they think their name is John or not. Now, John will snap too when he says that. But you know, it's, there's no article there for us. It was John that he said to come up here. But that's how ignorant that some teachers are, they're seducing spirits. I cannot believe that people have lost the art of reading, but they can't simply follow a subject. But they have to make it one size fit all. Well, let's just stick ourselves in here. Hey, if you're that ignorant about God's word, you want to be careful. You may not want to go where that bus is going. Okay, so... So there you have it. Beware of those that teach children to fly to save their souls. Why? God, your father, is against it. It will continue. You know, it takes a big, big uh, group to say, we were sure wrong, weren't we? No, it's easier just to repeat, repeat, and kid yourself up until it comes time to go into the abyss. And that's when the sweat begins to pop. Don't be deceived. Turn with me. I said we were going to go to Mark 13. In closing, New Testament, Mark 13. You're all familiar with this chapter. I don't have to even...
teach it. I could, without turning there, you could have picked up on it. <clears throat> but we will turn there. This, of course, is how when they ask Jesus, what's it going to be like just before you return? When, at your second coming, what's it going to be like? And he gives seven events in this chapter that are the seven seals, the seven vials, and the seven trumps. He just lays it out there and tells you in this 13th chapter of Mark. He tells how you're going to be delivered up before the false messiah. And the Holy Spirit is going to speak through you. But there's one thing I want you to be very careful of. In as much as we did it, let's go with verse 17. As much as I, I used this earlier, in those seven signs, he says in verse 17, but woe to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. That means they were impregnated while the true husband was going, gone. You ever heard the parable of the ten virgins? Five didn't make it, and they were there all the way up to the last hour. And pray that your flight be not in the winter. Is harvest in the winter where you are? I don't think so. This is the harvest. For in those days, you'd be harvested out of season, in other words, by the false Messiah. For in those days shall be affliction, such as, that's tribulation. This is second, the first tribulation belongs to the false Messiah, not the Lord Jesus Christ. Such as was not from the beginning of the creation, which God created until this time, neither shall be. Many people say, well, you don't understand, brother. There was a Roman general named Titus went in and conquered Jerusalem, and that's what that's talking about. And that was the greatest affliction since creation. Well, I could sell that boy the Brooklyn Bridge in a minute. No. This hasn't happened yet, okay? And except that the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. Are you flesh? I think so. It said no flesh should be saved, but for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. There's going to be miracles that you cannot imagine. Whoa. Verse 21. And then if any man shall say to you, what is this warning about? Back in uh, verse uh, 6, Jesus said, there are a lot of people going to come in my name saying that I sent them. You're going to have a lot of preachers saying, I'll be Christian, I represent Christ. He said, you better watch them because they will deceive you. They're going to deceive many. Verse 21, and when, if any man shall say to you, lo, here is Christ, or he is there, believe him not. You're going to hear a lot of it, friend. They're going to say he was in Jerusalem on Mount Zion, working miracles, healing people, bringing peace, paying off people's debts, bringing peace to the world. It's wonderful to be back. Uh -uh. Not him. Not as long as you're in the flesh body. He's a fake. Because when the truth comes, you move into that spiritual body. 22, listen carefully. For false Christ and false prophets shall, not maybe, not perhaps, shall rise and shall so show signs and wonders. Hey, they got a bag full of tricks that makes Jamrys look sick. Old snake jumping there out of a stick. They got stuff that really impress you. Are you ready for it? Don't be deceived. To seduce, there's that word again. To seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. Can you be seduced spiritually by evil spirits or seducing spirits? I hope not. I would really truly feel I had failed you if that should happen, okay? I really would. I don't think it's possible myself because we don't find him tempting, especially when we see him doing that to our own relatives, our own people and other people, races. We find him to be an abomination. I don't think it's possible, but God wants you to know through the son, that's how good he is at deceiving. It'll make you wonder, but don't let it. Because Jesus has forewarned you, it ain't maybe going to happen. It ain't perhaps going to come to pass. The false Messiah will come first. And they're going to say to you, he's here and he's there. Don't you believe it? 
Do you know why you don't have to worry? Because of the next verse. But take ye heed, that means you pay attention. Behold, I have foretold you all things. Do you know what that means? In this work, he has foretold you all that you need to know to conquer Satan, to conquer this world. He has told you all that you need to know whereby seducing spirits will run off of you like water off a duck's back. Has no place in you. Why? Because you are an able, can do type Christian that follows God's word, not this man or any other man's word, but strictly adheres to that that God has foretold you. See that you are not destroyed because of the lack of knowledge, because it's all there. No excuse, friends. Do your homework and see that you don't just learn God's word, but do it to the best of your ability. Be a doer. God counts. You know something? That's when blessings fall. It's when you're a doer. You can read the word from now on and until you started doing, you're not going to get any blessing other than to be blessed by the word. I'm talking about God knocking some big rocks out of your road so you'll amount to something, okay? When you become a doer, then he knows what you have need of and he's going to give it to you. I believe that with all my heart, with all my mind, with all my soul. So, that's why I can, without any hesitation, say that God's word is a reality for you in your life. See that you love him. Be sure you tell him that you love him. And his blessings will open. You will be blessed. Why? My goodness, you're a child of God and he owns everything. Why would he want to withhold something from you if you were worth it? Do you want me to say that again? Why? The way he loves you, if you love him and are a doer, why in the world would he withhold it as long as you're worth it? Okay? There's a lot in that. I hope you know what I'm saying. A lot of people say, well, why God doesn't answer my prayers? Well, there's a reason. All right? If he's not, then maybe he doesn't want you to go there because he knows you get hurt. Tempering, okay? <laughs> yeah, buddy, just, Daddy wouldn't let me do what I wouldn't do. <laughs> well, sometimes it's best for you. You see, he knows what's down the road. Sometimes we don't. All right. Hey, I love you all. I hope you enjoyed that. Seducing spirits, they're out there, friend. You're exposed to them all the time. How are you doing? I know. I can tell by your faces. You're doing great. We got the victory. I love you. God bless you. Let's all stand. Okay. And uh, it means to make light of, to jeer. It's one thing God won't put up with. What falls in that category? False teaching. And for you to do what's wrong when you know better. When you break one of God's commandments, get ready, friend. You're going to get it. God will not tolerate mocking. Now, the reason we opened our Bibles here to second, uh, why, why are we covering this? Because in a museum in New York City, blatantly and openly is a portrayal there paid for by taxpayer 